We reserve the right to take action when our national security is directly threatened. Where does your loyalty lie? Is it with Queen and country or is it with the Muslims overboard? Going to fight for a terrorist organisation is a criminal act. It's a one-way ticket. If you go, you can't simply change your mind and come back. We're here outside the Foreign Office in London and we're about to speak to the British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond about the UK's contribution to the coalition and how the fight against the Islamic State is progressing. Hi Foreign Secretary, how's Hello. it going? Good how are you? you? And you? Recently the Islamic State has been able to seize uh, Palmyra in Syria and Ramadi in, in Iraq. Clearly Islamic State is able to expand still. It almost looks as if you're standing by as the map of the Middle East is being redrawn. Is it time to maybe rethink uh, the strategy that the coalition is currently implementing? I reject the idea that ISIL is um, expanding. Ramadi has been fought over for the last 12 months. Um, ISIL were in the city uh, already, but in terms of territory gained, it's a very small additional amount of territory and it's not strategically important. Much more significant is the uh, fall of Tikrit to uh, um, Iraqi government forces earlier on this year. Strategically, ISIL's advance has been stopped, that is clear. Recently, Sir Richard Dannett, former head of the armed forces, uh, called for a review on the, the government's position on uh, boots on the ground policy. Do you think it's an option we should really actually now consider if we, if we want to deal with ISIS in a fast manner? If we were in a situation where the Iraqi government was pleading with us to put Western boots on the ground and we were refusing, um, then he would have a point. The Iraqis are very clear, and I think rightly so, that this fight cannot be won by outsiders. They don't want uh, Western troops' boots on the ground. Should there be uh, an increase in, in airstrikes? There was a lot of complaints from Ramadi that there weren't enough around the time. Um, well, we have the capability to mount uh, as many airstrikes as, as, as we have targets. The constraint, as I understand it at the moment, is identifying enough targets where we can be absolutely confident that there will not be collateral damage or civilian casualties. The Ramadi thing, um, the ISIL are not stupid. They launched their ferocious attack on um, uh, the government compound in Ramadi at a time when the weather did not allow coalition aircraft uh, to fly. This is literally the very front line in the global fight against the Islamic State. Increasingly, uh, we've seen on the ground the face of that Iraqi fight back is those of Iranian-backed Shia militias. Are you concerned about Iran's growing influence? We need to be careful that that uh, influence doesn't destabilize um, Iraq. I think it's important to be careful about describing all Shia militias as Iranian-controlled. Some of them are, but some of them aren't. The most powerful and, are. And, yeah. and that there's a strand of Iraqi Shia nationalism which I think we should respect. The challenge for the government of Iraq is that the bulk of the capable uh, military forces in Iraq at the moment are either Kurdish uh, or Shia militias. If there's one thing that I could wish for in Iraq at the moment, it would be the emergence of an effective, well-armed, well-disciplined, well-motivated Sunni fighting force. Uh, you mentioned the, the Kurdish Peshmerga. We, we filmed with them earlier this year. Um, obviously, they're getting support from uh, many nations, uh, but they did complain about the lack of British support uh, in comparison to, say, the, the Germans who've provided 16,000 assault rifles. We've given them 40 machine guns. Why is there this sort of discrepancy in material support to the forces like the Peshmerga? Well, look, my experience is that um, if you put a journalist into any area like uh, uh, Bill and challenge him, he'll be able to find somebody who will complain about anybody's uh, contribution. Different people will contribute in different ways. Albania um, has donated vast amounts of ammunition, which the Peshmerga needs. Yeah. Uh, the RAF has flown that uh, ammunition in uh, to Erbil. The speciality uh, support that we're 
delivering is counter IED, an area where Britain has particular expertise. It is IEDs that are posing the greatest threat to the government and Peshmerga forces on the ground at the moment. So we are delivering strong support uh, to the Peshmerga and we continually review what we're offering and what we're doing. And in terms of Syria, you recently have talked about the Assad regime's use of barrel bombs in, in Aleppo. On, on Saturday, at least 70 people were reported to have been killed from uh, government barrel bombings. Obviously, with the coalition strikes, ISIS, why has there been sort of still a, a real lack of a proper action against the Assad regime? The Assad regime's capabilities are being uh, degraded. But unfortunately, the moderate armed opposition that we have backed is not making the progress that we need it to make. Um, more extreme groups are often in the lead when uh, success is scored against the regime. We're the second largest deliverer of airstrikes in Iraq. The Americans and the Arab partners are delivering airstrikes in Syria. At the moment, there is no need for us to spread our effort more widely across the two theatres. The, the arrangement we've got in place works perfectly well. There was an argument to say that there is a, a need for an increase in the Islamic State recently took Palmyra and now controls up to 50% of the country. Surely that should sort of... Uh... Yeah, but the, the, the problem is that airstrike cannot resolve all of these challenges. Of course, and uh, Palmyra is a good example because of the presence of civilians, because of the way ISIL operates, because of the risk to cultural heritage, there would have been a uh, really significant limit to what could be done uh, through airstrike. You've mentioned a moderate opposition. A lot of those sort of older moderate groups have now been swallowed by this new coalition, uh, Jaysh al-Fatah, the army of conquest. Uh, there's now a chance that they could turn their attention towards uh, the sort of Alawite enclave of Latakia. Is that something that the coalition is willing to stand by and let happen? The problem here is that the Assad regime is effectively protected and supported by Russia and by Iran. If we're going to make political progress, we have to have some kind of understanding with Russia and Iran about how we can see emerging in place of Assad a regime which is able to take on ISIL and the more extreme Islamist groups uh, ranged against it. Has there been discussions about possibly targeting the Islamic State in places like Libya? So long as there is a, uh, a standoff between the two opposing claimants on power in Libya, it's difficult for the outside world to intervene. Our position at the moment is to focus on building that national unity government. But if, the, if that threat became apparent, would you look beyond sort of the re request from a, a unity government and just sort of take action? Well, of course, we reserve the right, as do um, all sovereign nations, to take action unilaterally or with partners when our national security is directly threatened or the lives of our citizens are put at risk. The Islamic State as an ideal is, has been very popular worldwide and arguably here in the, in the UK. What is being done by the current government to sort of check that influence? It's important that we expose to people who might be vulnerable to recruitment the gap between the glamorised image um, presented in the glossy um, messaging and the brutal reality on the ground which so many um, British recruits have discovered to their cost once they've got there. We believe martyrs are not dead, they're still alive enjoying themselves in heaven. There's a worry I think that some of the more punitive measures of people returning from that could send the wrong signal. I mean we have to be clear that uh, going to fight for a terrorist organisation anywhere in the world is a criminal act and if you are a British citizen uh, and you carry out that kind of activity you must expect uh, to be brought to justice and to be punished 
uh, for it. It's a one-way ticket. If you go, you can't simply change your mind and come back. And Britain will be next. And Britain will be, inshallah, will be in the, in the world of Islamic world, inshallah ta'ala, bi'ithnillah. Last government, there's a lot of defence spending cuts. There's also been cuts to obviously your office here now and our contributions in comparison to our American partners in the coalition are a lot less. Is there a danger that the UK is withdrawing as a real power? Uh, no, and um, yep. we're going to have a debate in the Queen's speech on Britain's role in the world and I shall be making clear that Britain intends to remain engaged, outward looking and an active player uh, on the global scene and we're one of really a very small number of countries around the world that have both the capability and the aspiration to be engaged in uh, global policy.